my definition of Tejano is a Mexican American who first says he's an American, secondly says he just happens to be Mexican, and he's raised in Texas with Tejano values. Tejano for me is wonderful. I enjoy being Tejano. I enjoy what I said earlier, being a Americano and a Mexicano. And I learned all of the, how to be proud to be a Mexicano, a Tejano, an American from my grandparents and my parents. My grandfather on my mom's side owned a grocery store and owned a ranch. Uh, my grandmother worked with him at the grocery store. My grandfather on my dad's side was a horse trainer, uh, also a migrant worker. And his mom was a migrant worker, homemaker, and also uh, babysat, cleaned homes for other people. My dad was a, uh, a army veteran. Uh, when he was younger, he used to uh, be a migrant worker. And when he got out of the army, he took advantage of his veterans benefits and learned a trade to be a plumber and electrician. My mother was also a migrant worker and my mom came to San Antonio, uh, did a uh, program and got her cosmetology license back in the uh, 50s. Being Tejano in my school, uh, it was very natural, very easy. It was a predominantly Hispanic area, but not overwhelmingly. Uh, it was probably 60% Tejano, uh, what I would call Tejano, and 40% non-Tejanos. But uh, for the most part, we all got along. Uh, we didn't really look at each other any differently. Uh, we looked at each other as being from our hometown. Tejano food to me, uh, the first thing I think of when you say Tejano food is going to be enchiladas. Uh, enchiladas is my favorite. When I think of my grandmother's and my mom's cooking, of course, I think of tortillas and frijoles and arroz and anything guisado, such as picadillo, carne guisada, uh, tacos. Uh, that's kind of the Tejano. Uh, tacos, as far as uh, flour tortilla tacos were probably not so predominant for us until probably the late 70s, early 80s. Well, Tejano music was probably as far back as I can remember. Uh, actually, my wife's mother babysat me when I was little, and I can still remember running around the house singing uh, Tejano music, a uh, particular song by Joe Bravo, and uh, and growing up all the time with my mom had her stereo on while she did her housework or while she cooked or while we did our homework. Uh, we weren't allowed to really have the TV on and do our homework, but she always had some music on. And I remember my dad driving up to the house and having the music and my dad grabbing my mom and them dancing in the kitchen while my mom was cooking. So Tejano music has always been a big part of our lives. Probably my favorite favorite is seeing how much my dad enjoyed being a Tejano. And being an army veteran, being an American, uh, how proud he was of his roots being a Tejano. He did not consider himself a Latino. He did not consider his, himself Hispano. Uh, he considered himself Mexicano, but an American Mexicano, uh, Tejano. My dad started from, according to him, started from birth. So they were born into being migrant workers. Uh, my father was the third uh, of four children. Uh, he had two older brothers and a younger sister. And uh, when his mom and dad uh, split up, he was probably around six years old and they went to live with uh, his mom's uh, brother who had uh, farming equipment and was able to not only uh, plant but he was also able to harvest but he they went to live with him and they became basically his migrant workers 
And uh, so they didn't travel as much as other families did, but they predominantly worked for him picking cotton, cutting broom, uh, planting, taking care of the animals, and basically worked seven days a week. And the first six days, basically Monday through Saturday, was to basically just provide, uh, to be thankful they had shelter and food. On Sundays, he would allow them to use the truck and uh, they would go and pick up cotton that fell off the trucks on the side of the road. And that was their money, that was their spending money. And when I say spending money, I don't mean they went to the mall. I mean, that was what my grandmother would save up to make sure that they had shoes and a little bit of clothes and things like that. There was no, I, I think the hardest part for him was that there was nothing, uh, there was no splurges. Uh, their splurges was somebody getting married, somebody having a quinceanera, uh, getting to go to a dance, and again, tying in the Tejano music uh, back into all of that. That's That was their part. My mom uh, was born as well into that. They did picking of cotton. They did cutting of broom as well. And um, my grandfather bought his first farm, first farm, yeah, I guess I should say, and uh, he started his grocery store. So basically when he started his grocery store, then basically he allowed people to charge uh, on an annual basis. And whenever they had the cosecha, which basically means when after everything is planted, after everything is grown, after everything is picked, it's taken to market, the money that they got, then the people would go and pay off their bills for the whole year. And then they would start the charging cycle all over again. So my mom, my mom's life was a little bit different than my dad's, uh, but having her father around uh, was gonna make things different. My mom's uh, grandfather on my abuelito side uh, actually had a trading post in the late 1800s and he traded with the Indians uh, in, in the Valle. And uh, so prior to that, I'm not sure what his father did or grandfather, but I think that was always a part of my mom's dad's part, my abuelitos, when he started his grocery store. Now he started his grocery store in the 1930s and he ran it until the late 70s, so 40 years or plus. So I, I think that part of that was just not wanting to have to raise his kids as migrant workers. Uh, my dad as well, I think he just didn't want to go back to that part of the life of being a migrant worker. It was very difficult for migrant worker children uh, because they would be able to go to school during uh, maybe from September through November or December, but on the second semester, that's when they would leave. So they were never able to complete a grade. My father was 18 and he was still in third grade, considered to be in third grade. But obviously he wasn't dumb. He went to the military and he came back and he got his plumbing license and his electrical license. They just never were allowed to complete anything. Uh, my mother uh, did not finish high school as well, but my grandparents did make her pursue something she enjoyed, and she came to live with her grandmother, step-grandmother here in San Antonio, and uh, she raised her in, in the sense of to allow her the uh, ability to go to uh, a trade, and she, that's where she got her cosmetology. Hard work is not gonna kill you. Uh, if you don't enjoy what you're doing, then go get an education and do it in what you want to do. And then, then you can be the boss. But until then, you don't complain, you just work hard. And, and I think that's something that my, my father and my mother and my, my abuelito instilled in us. So we worked at the farm and we didn't work for any pay. Uh, we, were, we went out there because we enjoyed it. You know, we, we weren't treated uh, horribly or anything like that, but we were taught how to feed animals, how to uh, corral animals, how to ride horses. We did all of that. 
and and we're still here my dad taught us how to work my dad taught us you know that working you know five six days a week seven days a week wasn't the end of the world and and to always remember who your boss was and to respect your boss and if you didn't like what your boss had to say then you should strive to be your own boss but until then accept your paycheck be quiet do your job and then when your time comes and you think you can do it on your own do it on your own so i think those are the things that my parents instilled in me uh, just work hard and don't complain just be grateful every day I never thought about it like what you just said that I'm actually first generation uh, non-migrant worker that really like wow that really hit hard uh, I think primarily was uh, pass on what my family or my father and mother taught me is that you know work hard but do something you love and don't let anything get in your way uh, that that's probably the one thing that I've always tried to push instill in my kids is you know just keep working work hard uh, enjoy yourself yeah, things like that uh, my father was probably the one that uh, we talked to the most about migrant work and I remember one particular thing that he always said was he didn't really mind picking cotton not that he loved it but he didn't mind but he didn't like to cut broom and he said the reason is because broom would get inside your clothing and it becomes very itchy. And the more you sweat, the more it itches. Uh, it was also dangerous work. There was rattlesnakes and things out in the field that they had to watch for. So, you know, and, and all of that, I knew that I never wanted to do that. I know when I had my first job, I went to college. It didn't work out for me uh, because of me. And my dad made me work at a fiberglass plant. And I remember I worked there one day and I got an interview and went to my other job and took a big chance and I got the job because if I had come home without a job, I knew my dad would be upset. But that one day at the fiberglass has, working in fiberglass has defined me of who I am today because there's not a day that I don't remember working in that fiberglass plant and that's not anything that I ever want to go back and do ever. I, I, I can't tell you how impressed I am with people that have worked there for years and years. Oh I think it's huge. Uh, I, I don't mind the word Tejano because that's what I think we are. I think you know this was a part of Mexico that we live in and then it became a part of the US through Texas but I mean I think it's important that everybody understand that what a Tejano is. Uh, Tejano is to me is not a Chicano, he's, we're not Hispanos, we're not Latinos, uh, we're native, we were here, uh, we were here first and we became Americans and, and that's who we are. So I don't particularly care for any type of labels. I think if you live in the U.S., you're an American. And whether your, your, your race should matter, nothing. Uh, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, I think your roots matter as far as to pass on to your kids what has happened in past generations so we don't repeat those mistakes again. But as far as who we are, you know, I, I'll, I consider myself first and foremost an American. I'm a Mexicano who happens to live in America, but as far as my roots, yeah, I'm Tejano. And, and I'll always be Tejano and I'll pass that on to my children. And if I have grandchildren, great-grandchildren, I, I want them to be able to understand what their forefathers have gone through to get to this point.